Our guests are speaking out publicly so that stories like the one you just heard from Army veteran Nicole Bowen will become a thing of the past. They are Congresswoman Jackie Speer and Robert Shadley, a retired Army general, and a game unraveling a military sex scandal. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Uh, Congresswoman Speer, you. I, I, I want... Thanks for being here. Congresswoman, I want to begin with you. You've blasted Congress as an enabler of sexual assault. How so? Well, we've known about this issue for 25 years. There have been plenty of scandals. Uh, Mr. Shadley will talk about Aberdeen. Uh, we have historically held hearings. We've had the brass from the Pentagon come up to Capitol Hill. They've all said the right things, zero tolerance, and then nothing changes. And I made a commitment three years ago that I was not going to let go of this issue until we did something real. And I really feel for the first time, both in the Senate and the House, that we have traction now on this issue and that we will address it, not by just doing more of the same, which is no training and uh, that kind of activity uh, is not enough. Training is not going to solve this problem. It's a cultural problem. Yeah, and until we take these cases out of the chain of command, we are not going to be seeing any dramatic change. And, and General Shalley, do you agree with the Congresswoman? I agree with just about everything uh, Representative Spear had to say. She's exactly spot on. We've known about this problem for 25 years. It's about abuse of power. Uh, and part of the problem that the part of the culture that needs to be corrected, as she uh, accurately portrayed, is that there are people in organizations who know this unacceptable behavior is going on, and they don't do anything about it. And uh, so I think uh, if, as long, uh, we need to treat this problem as a force protection issue, not a uh, a woman's rights issue or a human relations, uh, human resources issue or a personnel issue. It's a force protection issue because our military cannot operate with all the great women we have serving their next country. And, and Congressman, it's mind-boggling. I mean, maybe the military is trying to change the culture, but when you hire two people or put two people into positions who are, who are supposed to solve the problem, and then those two, those two people are accused of sexual assault, I mean, how do you put those kinds of people in those positions? Well, Carol, when you also appreciate that these individuals were pointed as being the tip of the spear, so to speak. They were given 80 hours of training. There was background checks done on them. They were supposed to be the creme de la creme. They were supposed to be the ones that were going to be the, the new leadership of the military and they turn out to be sexual predators that's how endemic this problem is within the military and um, you know more training is not the answer and that's typically what you will hear from everyone in the military we're going to recertify everyone we're going to do more training you know in the private sector if someone sexually harasses they're fired in the military they look the other way, and the conduct continues, and then it turns into sexual assault and rape. Well, why weren't women put into those positions, do you think? Why are women put into... Well, no, no, I mean, those, those, those men held those positions, now they stand accused, but why wasn't a woman put into that position to try to stem... Well, I think in, in part because, you know, the, the problem is with the men for the most part. I mean, and we also have to underscore the fact that this is happening to men. Men are being sexually assaulted and raped as well as women. In fact, in, the, in terms of numbers, more men than women. It's all about power. And the power structure is held by men. So you, they probably figured out that they needed a man in those positions because you had to educate the men. If you put a woman in one of those positions, um, they dismissed as being just token and for the most part these sexual assault prevention and response offices within the military have been token they haven't had any power any clout any investigative authority uh, they're there to just basically provide training videos and that's not what we need what we need is to see heads roll general shanley i, I want to get sort of behind the psychology of this i mean because most men are not abusers the vast majority of men are not abusers. I mean, is it when they enter the military that this pops into their head that this is acceptable behavior? Or is the military attracting a certain kind of guy? Uh, two points, uh, Carol. One, uh, if you look at those 26,000 cases, 
and 1.3 million service members. That's about 2% are causing the problem. Any, uh, one sexual assault is one too many. The, the fact that this is a relatively small number should make it very uh, easier for us to sort out who those bad actors are and get them out of our army and our military. The, uh, the, the challenge that you have is, again, sexual assault is about a, a power. And so you put people in positions in a hierarchical structure where uh, the rank structure just uh, emanates power over subordinates that the, you facilitate this abuse of power by people who have a propensity to do that. And that's why it's so essential that, first of all, we get care for the, the victims of sexual assaults and make sure that we get them proper care. I'm having lunch with a, a lady who came to a book signing who was raped at the Air Force Academy 25 years ago, and she just wants to talk, and we've been communicating ever since. Wow. It's a terrible, traumatic experience that these people suffer, both men and women, from the sexual assaults. And, uh, and, and uh, so if you take care of the victims, then from their statements you can find out who the perpetrators were, and, and I agree with uh, Congresswoman Spear. I suspect, and I don't know, but uh, this is probably not the first time that uh, the individual at Fort Hood uh, exhibited this behavior. Yeah, okay, well, we're glad that both of you are carrying on the fight. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Congresswoman Jackie Spear and retired Army Major General Robert